let's move on. The previous one, you can associate it to word vectors or the word vector paper, word to vec. This line method, you can associate it with glove or you can draw analogies to glove. And we're gonna see why, because this is based on the global statistics of your graph. So in, in terms of applications, you can use graphs for visualization, node classification, link prediction, recommendation, etc. These are usually information networks, like language, like social networks, like citation networks. This author is citing the other person, or the other author is citing another author, or this paper is citing another paper, etc. These are going to give you networks. V is your set of vertices, edges. You have your edge. The previous paper, it was about uh, unweighted graphs. Now we want to move towards weighted graphs. And the previous paper was undirected. You can also work with directed graphs. So undirected is when you switch the roles of your edges, it doesn't matter. They're going to have the same weight on your edge. For instance, a directed graph is the citation networks. One author is citing the other author, but the other author is not citing you back. Or one paper is citing another paper, but there is no reason for the other paper to cite you back, okay? Undirected, like social networks of users in Facebook. For Twitter, you are following somebody. There is no reason for them to follow you. That's directed, Facebook is undirected. Weighted could be how do you weight them? Like the number of times that two words are co-occurring in your sentences could be a weight. Actually, you can treat your text as graphs through the word occurrence network. And again, your objective is to represent each vertex by low dimensional vector in RD. And we are gonna treat these as integers. And you want to define that mapping that takes you from integers to RD to the space of vectors. So this concept is very important for line. You can have first order proximity in your graph, like six and seven are first order close to each other because there is a direct edge between the two. Five and six are second order close because they are not directly connected, but they have shared neighbors. They have multiple shared neighbors actually. So as soon as you have at least one shared neighbor, you're second order uh, close to each other. So now you want to write an objective that's gonna encode first order proximity and second order proximity. So first order proximity is for undirected edges and second order could be for directed edges. We're gonna see next. Let's pick two vertices and you want to write down the joint probability between vertex VI and vertex VJ, maybe vertex eight and vertex four or vertex six and vertex seven. You can model that. You can say, I have a word vector for VI or I have a vector for VI, I have another vector for VJ, let's call that UJ. So you have UI and UJ, you multiply them together, and then you push that through a sigmoid. That's gonna give you a probability. And UI is gonna be the word representation or the vector representation of your vertex. And PI, P1 is gonna introduce a distribution over V times V. We know the global statistics of our graph that's gonna give us an empirical counterpart to P1. And then you can minimize the KL divergence between P1 hat and P1 and optimize for these parameters. But what is empirical counterpart of P1? You know the weight. For instance, the weight between six and seven is stronger than the weight between seven and eight. And these are the thickness of your line between the two or the thickness of your edges. You take that weight, and you divide it by the global weight of your graph. So you add this weight plus this weight plus the other weight, all of these weights, you add them together. That's gonna to give you capital W. Now this is your P1 hat. The rest of it is KL divergence between the two. Once you write down the formula for KL divergence, get rid of the constants or ignore the constants because they don't impact your optimization. You're gonna end up with something that looks like cross entropy. These numbers you know, these are the global statistics of your graph. You know what is the weight between vertex VI and vertex VJ. And this P1, you modeled it, and this is your model. And then you are optimizing over UI and UJ or the corresponding matrix, if you put those in a matrix. That is gonna encode first order proximity, but we know that the structure of a graph, it's not only about the direct connection, 
between edges. It's about indirect connections as well. How do you encode that? The idea is for each vertex, you associate two identities or two representations. So they can play two roles. It could be the vertex itself, like UI, or it could be the context of other vectors. For instance, a person could be that person, him or herself, or it could be the brother or sister of somebody else. So they can have two different roles. They can play two different roles in the society. It's the same thing here. Why is it useful? Because now VI is going to correspond to UI. It's going to correspond to you yourself, to the vertex itself. And U bar J is going to correspond to the context. And we know that the context matters. And then you can write a softmax over all of the vertices showing up in your graph. And that's going to give you a probability. Now you model the probability of VJ, like node one, showing up in the context of node five. So you just model it. Now that you have a model, you look at your global statistics, and then you can minimize the distance between the KL divergence or whatever other distance that you choose between the empirical and the actual model that you wrote. This is over all of your vertices, and then you can associate importance to your vertices. For instance, maybe some of the vertices in your graph are more important because they have more weights, more edges coming out of them. For instance, this could be the degree of your node. So they have more connections in your network. That could be the importance that you associate to vertex VI. But what is this D? And actually, what is this P hat? This is going to be the weight between two nodes divided by the out degree. So the out degree of node six, you need to add this weight plus these other three weights. That's going to give you the out degree. And then you divide this number by that summation. That's going to give you your empirical counterpart for P2. And this is exactly what I just mentioned. You look at your neighbors and you add up the weights. You look at your neighbors, add this weight plus that weight, this other weight, and this other weight. That's going to give you your out degree. Now, again, you write down your KL divergence, ignore the constants. You set your lambda i's to the actual di's, your out degrees. And then you get a similar formula to what you have down here. The only thing that changed is this uh, P2, the model that you wrote down. Now you have more parameters. You have UIs and UI bars. We know that computing the softmax is going to be very expensive. This softmax here is going to be very expensive because of this summation over the entire nodes. And we have a quick trick for that. We used it before. This is the negative sampling or noise contrastive estimation. You show it a positive example, and you show it a couple of negative examples. So VKs are going to be negative. And these are, you're sampling your edges. Sometimes an edge exists, and sometimes it doesn't exist. For those of them that don't exist, you're sampling from them. These are the negative examples, and your positive examples are the ones that have connections. So your negative samples are actually your edges. There is no edge here. That's a negative example. This is a positive example. And you show it a couple of negative examples, like you show it 8, 9, and 10, because they are not connected to 6. And this, we also saw it when we were doing glove for word vectors or word to vec. We had this weird uh, 3 over 4 rule. We are going to use that again here. And D is your degree of that vertex. So your sampling probability is going to be proportional to this ratio, to this number. And then there's a problem with this loss function. If you use it in practice, and if you apply it on weighted graphs, we know that for a weighted graph, this edge is more important than this other edge because it has a higher weight. But if you use usual stochastic gradient descent, you're going to sample this edge as many times as you are sampling this edge. You are seeing it as many, as equal times during training. That's not a good idea. It's going to make things very slow to converge. What you can do is you can change your sampling strategy when you are doing mini batching. In your mini batches, include edges that uh, according to their weight, according to their importance. So that's a minor detail for how to train this, these types of vectors. But then if you want to actually apply it on a bunch of data sets, you can have the Wikipedia data set. These are language networks. You can have social networks like Flickr and YouTube. 
or you can have citation networks. And these are the actual statistics. You have these many vertices for the Wikipedia data set and these many edges. And this is the average degree for each one of your vertices. This is a seven way classification and uh, you have very few labeled data. These many of them are actually labeled. Out of 1,900,000, you have 70,000 of them labeled. And then you can do word analogy. Like how would you test a language model? You can test or word vectors. You can test your node embeddings here as well. You have deep walk, skip gram, and the line is this method here. I think I'm gonna move on to the next one. Are there any questions? What does it mean by word analogy in this case? Uh, it's very similar to what we did for text. It's like the relationship between Paris to France is similar to Berlin to what? And then it needs to give you Germany. Oh, and you're just doing that on the, uh, the titles of the Wikipedia page and then using the graph embeddings to compute that. that. Yes. Okay, cool. You, have, you actually have some data sets for word analogy. But the idea is that you can treat your texts as graphs because of this co-occurrence network. As soon as two words appear in the same sentence, you, they co-occurred once, so you increment their co-occurrence by one, okay? These are the weights between your nodes. And your words are actually your nodes, and your co-occurrence weights or your edges are the co-occurrence. These two words co-occurred in the same text. Any other questions? Okay, perfect.